Hi there, my name is Joy Canesco with Live Joyfully Well, and I am a meditation teacher, and I am gonna talk a little bit about meditation. We'll go through a couple intro points for you. So first of all, just know that meditation is something that you can do anywhere. You can do it standing, seated, you can do it even while you're washing dishes and brushing your hair. It is something you can do. Um, it's just really about being in the present moment and it's, it's a state of being really more than a state of doing. We'll talk about that in a second. You will want to consult with your physician before you do meditation. And I know you're like, what? It's just breathing. And it is, it's just breathing. But there are some people that actually have, um, have side effects from it like they feel more stressed out and if you are one of those people or if you've got cardiovascular issues you just want to double check with your physician or your health professional to make sure that it is appropriate for you so you'll always want to find yourself a safe and comfortable position to be in so safety's first feeling really secure in your surroundings so if you were to do a standing meditation out somewhere else um, you would probably want to do it against a wall or something so that you don't have to worry about people behind you and you'll feel safer there. So when standing, you really want to just try to make sure that you're even on both legs, that you feel really secure. You want to think not locked knees. You want to have the knees just slightly bent. Now your abs are going to be in just like 20% out of a hundred. Okay. And you want to think four inches below the belly button. Okay. Your pelvic floor, you're kind of lifting up and again, um, just lightly, so just a barely a little lift. You're lengthening through the sides of the waist, shoulders back and down, head is balanced over the heart, and just feel good and stable. And no matter what position you're in, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a straight spine, and that's just gonna allow you to breathe easy. So if you wanna sit in a chair, you can sit towards the end of the chair, that's fine. Okay, and then really think balanced, and you just wanna have those feet flat. If you want to slide yourself back where you're more, um, if you want to back support, that's fine. But you're going to want to have a little bit of space more than likely at your low back because you don't want to feel yourself collapse. You don't want to feel your ribs collapse. You want to be able to breathe. So you might need to have a small uh, lumbar pillow. You can make one using a small blanket. This is a small blanket here. So I'm going to fold it a few times, have that right at the small of my back, just for some extra support so that I feel grounded. And if you feel like your feet kind of dangle, then you can um, use books or blocks, and I'll show you that now. So for your feet, if you would like, you can have books, blocks, and you would probably want to angle them just slightly. So maybe you have a blanket there, have your blocks, and then your feet can just rest on it. Um, you just don't want to feel like your knees are higher than your hips. So make sure that you feel lifted enough. So if you want to be on the floor in a cross-legged position, you could use a blanket to have your hips up a little bit higher. You could use a block, one block to sit on or two, make it comfortable for you. Or you could also use a bolster, which is just a firmer pillow basically um, and you can find them online anywhere and you want to just sit towards the front of whatever you have so that it's going to kind of tilt your pelvis forward so you're not collapsing back because it's never about you're rounding your back you want to really find that neutral position so um, if you need more height have more height you can have blocks and a bolster it'll all work right so just finding that position that's comfortable then if you'd like for your arms you can have two blankets so that the arms can rest and feel supported you can be in prayer you can do hakini mudra whatever so if there's different hand positions whatever feels good though you can do palms down which may feel more grounding palms up which may feel more open. If you want to be in a reclined position, you would want to have possibly a thin blanket for your head. And then you can either have a couple blankets rolled for under the knees, like this, okay? Or you can use pillow, bolsters, 
whatever you need. So it's really about always keeping your spine as neutral as you can, having the heels touch the ground so that feels supported. And then you can have just very light support for the head. And then again, arms can be wherever you want, whatever feels good to you. So you can have your eyes closed. You can have them um, softly open, just kind of softly looking over the tip of your nose. So I'm kind of have my eyes downcast. You could also fix your eyes on an object like a candle or you know something that's a little more mesmerizing, but it really it's about softening your gaze so that you're taking out any visual distractions. So just a little detail about meditation. Um, I always call what I do guided meditation, but really what it is, is it's kind of getting you ready for meditation. So it's, what you're doing is you're doing asana, which is kind of getting you into a pose. So whether that's standing, seated, whatever you're doing, and then from there, you're going into your breath work, which is your pranayama. And then you're going through another stage. And this is really where the guided part comes in. It's the pratyahara, which is getting out of your surroundings and getting connected to yourself. So these are all things of doing. Okay, so guided meditation is really a doing. And then from there, you progress into concentration and then into meditation, which is just being. So just know that I call it meditation because I'm not going to call it pranayama and pratyahara because people are like, what the heck is that? But it's all the process of meditation. And because I'm a personal trainer, I just want to go through a couple exercises that you can do. If your goal is to be able to sit on the floor cross-legged and you cannot do that, um, let's go through a few exercises. If you have tight hips, tight low back, and if that limits you, Never force yourself into a position to think, oh, this way meditation will be better. You don't want to be fixated on what's tight, right? Or what's uh, where you feel sensation. So uh, what you can do to start with is really getting into some pelvic tilts. So you can start seated. You're just trying to tilt your pelvis and you're pulling your pelvic floor up and you would count one, two, three, and then you would release and grow tall. And then again, pelvic tilt, one, two, three. So you can start with those doing maybe five to 10 reps. From there, if you have issues with hips and if sitting cross-legged, getting that leg into external rotation, if that bugs you, start with one leg crossed, sliding up and holding, and then you can rotate that knee in and out. So you go below the knee, you can go above the knee, you can stay at the ankle, and then do those little rotations like that and then taking it up and then maybe pushing down, pulling that leg up. So these are little things you can do for hip mobility here. And then you can also go into seated cat cow. Hands can be right on the thighs. You're gonna round, you're gonna pulling your ribs down, tuck your head, and then you can open up, open the chest and go back and forth like that. And also if we're really restricted with our rotation, then that can be tight on our low back too. So you could be in a chair and you can turn like this sideways to your chair, grow tall and then just twist. And then this backhand is gonna push. You're gonna do this gently though. Your backhand pushes just a little bit. Your front hand can pull but you're not forcing, okay? So the real goal is about length. So you're nice and tall. So you would hold for a breath and out of it a little bit and then go back into it, not pushing super hard. It's not a jam of the spine, okay? It's just light, light, light tension here. And you have the abs in, pelvic floor is lifted, lengthening the sides of the waist, coming out of it and then going back into it. So those are a few things that you can do to help you get into a floor seated position if that is what you need. And just know that meditation is a process, it's a journey. And just like when you work out, you know, you have good days and days that aren't so great. It's the same with meditation. You're gonna have days that you feel really connected and days that you're like, eh, could have done better. And that's fine. Just try to continue with the practice because remember that practice will make progress, okay? 
So just good luck on your journey. And if you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask in those comments below. All right, bye-bye.